Okay, some of you said you wanted a long invasion. Here you go. Here's an invasion that was 70 some odd minutes long. Now, I, the PlayStation 5 is not able to record that much uh, in a single block, so I had to record it in two separate blocks. And also, uh, you know, the, there's a little bit of time in between there where I, I wasn't recording. And that uh, little snippet of time will be unaccounted for. And there are parts of this invasion that are so boring that I have simply uh, edited the footage to be eight times faster than it's supposed to be. Shortening this video down to right at 21 minutes. Showed the build off at the start. And now before this video gets completely, you know, underway. Please let me preface this by saying that 99.99% uh, .99 of the time, uh, I, I am not this type of uh, invader, right? So this is at, at meta level, uh, which, you know, sometimes you're going to come across people uh, who are a little more, I don't know, serious, I'm using air quotes. Um, at, at meta level, I am typically like one of the most chill, full-time invader types that you will ever meet. And if you don't believe me, if, I'm sure that there is someone who is seeing this video, it's their first time watching any video I've ever made, and they're gonna, they're gonna come away from this like, oh my god, what is wrong with this guy that he would do this for more than an hour? And I just want to assure you that most invasions don't go like this uh, and, and are much more chill uh, from my experience. And they're over much faster in my experience, one way or the other, okay? So we have kind of jumped into this invasion. Um, and the first thing that happened was we beat a phantom and now two blues have been summoned because that's the way uh, you know multiplayer works in this game. For anyone who doesn't know, you have two slots that can be filled with friendly phantoms. And they can be blue, which is they have been auto summoned. Uh, it's you know you put on a ring and it's like, hey, I need help uh, if I get invaded and blues will show up to help you. But also friendly phantoms, the the ones that you summon from their summon sign or from the summoning pool. You can have two phantoms. Okay. Well, going back to Dark Souls Three, the phantoms are are from uh, they have a different uh, timer that they work on than the blues, right? If you have two friendly phantoms and they both die and there's still an invader in your world, immediately two blues will show up. If both of those blues die, it will be at least five minutes before another blue can show up. The problem is that in that time, you can resummon your friend. Now, it there is a cooldown timer for summoning your friend, but if the blues live long enough for that timer to expire then the blues have done their job and you essentially can have an infinite pool of players uh, to throw at the invader this happens occasionally and when it happens some players are not good enough to to do anything about it even though it does happen and it does favor them highly some players are just not good enough to do anything with that advantage uh, or they get put in a situation where it doesn't matter you know maybe there's monsters hanging around or you know enemies or whatever but you know in a situation like this where this host is legitimately not playing the game uh, they they are in no danger of anything happening to them so they can essentially just throw a wave of 
uh, other players at me. Why the other players are okay as cannon fodder for a stranger who refuses to engage the game in any meaningful way, I don't understand. But that's where this comes in. I typically do not play like this. However, there's something wrong with my brain, and I will match your spite level. Right? E even if it's perceived. If, you, if I have perceived that you have slighted me, or shown me disrespect in some way, I will match that that level right and so this is what happens this is what happens when and, and from that point of view it's almost kind of interesting because it's essentially like two stubborn people just smashing their heads against each other uh, like goats or whatever but again if this is your first time seeing a Saint Riot video I assure you this is not how I typically am. This is, in fact, pause this video, open another tab, go watch one of my other videos, and you'll see that I'm typically, you know, not like this. But I, I can be driven to this point where I will exist purely to spite you. I will stay alive purely uh, because I know you don't like it, right? So this invasion, is just a series of me defeating blues and phantoms but unable to defeat blues and phantoms at a, at a time where I can take advantage of it and get to the host because the host refuses to do anything unless these other players have basically played the game uh, for him and I'm, I'm like legitimately like they he the player will not do anything except sit there at that grace and only when the other players have pushed ahead uh, typically because they're chasing me they, they get you know they, they push forward they defeat some enemies now the host can move forward a little bit and to be totally clear it's not my money that you bought the game with. if you want to play the game like that it's really none of my business I if, if you were my friend and you were like, man, I'm really interested in Elden Ring, but I just don't think I would enjoy playing a game like that. What I would do is I would simply say to my friend, let's save you some money and I'm just going to show you a YouTube playthrough and you can just watch and see what happens. Uh, or, you know, I'll show you the cutscenes or whatever, you know, that type of thing. I'm not going to make my friend waste $60 uh, on a game that they may not enjoy at all. Uh, that's just me. If, if, you know, if, if you want to experience the game like this, that's really, it's, it's none of my business until I invade you and I get in your world. And then my, uh, my spite is going to make me want to show you uh, what this game can be about in terms of uh, you know coming up against um, odds that do not favor you right and that's another thing and I'll, I will anybody who's ever sat around and ganked with their friends or with randoms if you've ever just sat around and killed invaders you know that the best tactic, the best tactic or, or strategy that you can employ is um, to just rush them down. You, you and your friends cannot hit each other. Uh, you, you know, like, the enemies in this game are not that bad if you have friends. If you have friends, there's not an enemy in this game, boss or otherwise that can offer any meaningful resistance to three players who understand even half of the mechanics of this game. Like, if you know how to attack, if you know how to heal, and you know how to dodge, you are essentially immortal if you're playing with friends. Um, until you get invaded. And for a person like me who does invasions, 
uh, a lot. You learn that you have to like shine the brightest in the situations where people rush you down. Those situations are like your bread and butter as an invader. Uh, in the chaos, you make something happen, right? And, and all it takes is one good play, which is why most invasions aren't like this. Uh, most invasions aren't, and, and, and that's not to say that like I play perfectly or anything like that, because like as I'm watching this, I'm seeing all these mistakes that I made. Things where I'm like, I could have, I could have ended this so much faster. But that's you know something you have with the benefit of hindsight. Um, in the moment, all I know is the host has two spears, and so they're essentially like unapproachable as long as they have a friend. So they have the dual spears. That's that's a pretty mean setup, and the phantom has the big hammer. Both of those things are easily avoidable if you have them separate. But if they are together, uh, all it takes is one mistake and you're gone, right? And so I'm not going to... I I might not be as aggressive as I need to be. Uh, now, like I said, looking back on it, I can see all these moments where I'm like, oh, I could have done more there. But uh, in the moment, you know, I, I'm not thinking about that. But... Uh, I forget what I was saying before I started on that little diatribe. Um, give me one second, let me go back and listen to my own commentary. Okay, so I was saying the best thing you can do if you're trying to gank an invader uh, is to just rush them down. Um, and that's what separates like a good invader from uh, you know a, a not as good invader is can they make something happen in that chaos because when you all come at the invader if one of you makes a mistake then the invader can capitalize on that and immediately it changes uh, the the momentum and the trajectory of the invasion and so one way or another a, a winner is decided quickly in Elden Ring typically this was also true of Demon Souls Dark Souls Bloodborne uh, PvP invasions as well. Now, those other games, to a lesser extent, with the exception of Bloodborne. Bloodborne works exactly like Elden Ring, where you cannot be invaded unless you choose to be, or you are engaged in uh, co-op multiplayer. When you when you engage in co-op, you are opening yourself up to the other type of multiplayer, which is an invasion. Bloodborne works the exact same way. And all of the games that I mentioned, uh, it's possible for both parties to do absurd amounts of damage very quickly and just sort of end the invasion one way or the other. Um, so I, I like that. I think that that's more fun. But what ends up happening in these situations is like this host just wants me to walk into uh, him and his friend and just basically accept my fate as uh, blender meat right but I'm not going to do that because it would be stupid it, that would be like me just accept or just expecting for you, I invade I expect you to accept your fate and to just you know uh, walk walk into that uh, ballista there just accept your fate and walk into that ballista. I don't want that. I, I, I want a fun, engaging fight, you know, where something cool could potentially happen and I can take it and I can clip it and I can make a cool YouTube video out of it. Um, but occasionally, instead of that, you get this. All right, so we've just been shooting at each other. And I've been pelting them with arrows and bolts, and that blue has run out of flasks, and so the blue has decided that they're just going to leave. Uh, so okay, they just leave. Now it's just the host and the phantom. But keep in mind, every enemy over there has already been, uh, every enemy over there has already been killed. That's the only reason the host is over there. Um, 
So this is where I realize that I need to save this footage. All right, and now we join back in. Nothing has happened, but I've moved because, like I said, PlayStation only records 60 minute blocks of stuff. So I, I realized that was coming up, and so I, I went ahead and saved that footage, and then where it picks back up is right here. So we missed out on like 30 seconds, or well, I, I won't say how much time we missed out on because I don't know, but we missed out on some of the invasion, but obviously we're still right here. Nothing happened. And at a certain point during this invasion, uh, you know, I had to take uh, my my union mandated invader break, you know, uh, but I, I was perfectly safe doing that because I knew they wouldn't do anything uh, <laughs> while I was sitting there AFK. Um, w were they to like press the attack in that moment, they probably would have would have killed all the enemies and me before I got back but I just knew that that was not something that they were gonna do that's just it wasn't gonna happen so I made this build uh, with the intention of uh, I, I wanted it to be capable of being me right of being able to win these types of wars of attrition and so it is like this is of all the builds that I've made this build which I've made a few times this is obviously at meta level but I have a very similar build uh, at level 60 um, it, I, this build is like capable of doing this this blue showed up and was just sort of like walking around not doing anything really they just ran around and sort of aggroed the mobs but didn't fight the mobs and so I thought okay maybe they're Maybe, maybe they know what's happening and they're going to like basically do something to get this kicking off. Uh, but then they just ran up there and started fighting that one enemy. And so I was like, okay, no, none of that. I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to let you take what little I have here. So while I went to go take a break, the host sent the phantom home and resummoned the phantom. Uh, I think that that has already happened. I, I could be wrong because uh, this is like a dream and it's not logical. You know, it's just chopped up memories of whatever. But I think we're nearing the end and I don't think uh, at this point anything else... I don't think there's much more like running back to the Erd Tree avatar. I think we're done with that, but I'm not sure. So here a blue is spawned in, but they're AFK. This is the same blue that was here earlier. They spawned in AFK. That's two free flasks for me, um, which puts me in a pretty good situation here. Fighting on the stairs, always a terrible idea. Now keep in mind, there's no enemies anywhere near here so the fact that like they stop there is completely nonsensical uh there's nothing here like I, this that's what I, i'm running around like what are you afraid of there's no enemies left like <laughs> but still they do it uh and apparently i was wrong because we are nearing our way back to that erd tree avatar again yep there we go Okay, this is where I take a break. So this is me. I've, I'm taking a break. I'm gone. Not even at the, the controller or whatever. Uh, when I come back, I come back in time to see that the Phantom has returned home. Which means the, the, the host has... Uh, the host has gone back to the Grace and they're going to re-summon that person. So that they can have their flask back. But two blues showed up. And this host, he keeps sending blues home. The reason he's sending blues home is because he can only have two friends. And he doesn't want two blues, he wants his friend back. But sending his friend home has triggered that 
in that cooldown. So he can't summon that friend for another five minutes. Uh, and in that course of time, he has sent home uh, one of the blues. So now it's just this blue. That's it. And you keep seeing summoning another cooperator, unable to summon cooperator. The reason he can't summon his friend back is because that friend is now on a cooldown timer. Uh, blues are on a different cooldown timer. We finally get the host alone, and that's the end of the invasion. And I, I hate it. I hate it. I don't think that, I, like, I'll be honest. I hope you enjoyed this video, but I don't see how you could. I don't see how you could, other than just like, maybe you don't have time to do this, and I do, and so you can sort of vicariously like, yeah, that's exactly what I'd do if I had the time. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Later, y'all.